Hey guys, so as some of you know, I have not recorded a YouTube video for quite a little while now. Um, and that is because I am working on a book with a US publisher, which is due out at the end of 2023. Um, it's going to be in all the major bookstores, um, on Amazon, all that kind of thing. So it's really exciting. It's a really big deal. But it has been quite a lot of work, as you can imagine, and I'm in the final stretch of working towards the deadline. I'm in the final sort of six weeks. So, yeah, it's uh, pedal to the metal right now. But, yeah, I just wanted to thank you all for your support and for continuing to watch this channel. Um, I will be back with more regular videos and hopefully more um, on location videos for 2023 as well. I've got some really exciting things coming up, including attending the Urban Sketches Symposium in Auckland in April, which I really didn't think I was going to be able to do, but the stars have aligned and I'm going to be there. So if any of you guys are there or if any of you live in New Zealand, please message me. I'd love to meet up with you guys and have some uh, sketching, sketchy buddies to hang out with. Um, but yeah, anyway, so this video you're about to watch. So the other thing that I've been doing other than doing the book and stuff is keeping up with Patreon. I release weekly demonstrations over there. So every Friday there's a demonstration uh, centered around a th different theme each month. So um, we're super active over there. So if you wanna come and join, uh, please do check it out. Um, so the video you're about to watch is just a video from my Patreon channel actually from last July and the theme of the month was mundane to magic so we took really boring household items and made them into super cool fun sketches so that's the video you're about to watch you may hear me refer to things like the previous week or next week's video that's aimed at the Patreon members so just bear in mind it's kind of um, straight from the Patreon channel, unedited in regards to the voiceover. So yeah, I hope you really enjoy it though. It's a really cool one. It's a really great one just to get you out of a rut. It's like super low um, risk, you know, you're just, just sketching a household item. I will put the link to the reference photo in the comments or in the description below, sorry, if you want to have a go at this one. Uh, any questions, do just let me know. Um, and I hope to see you over on Patreon. So thanks for hanging in there with me, guys. And I will definitely be back with more regular videos in 2023. Um, and yeah, any comments or questions, just let me know. Hey guys, so back for week two of Mundane to Magic. And in this week's video, I thought I'd do something just a tiny bit more conventional and my conventional to me, I guess, and a bit more my style. Uh, I feel like I haven't done anything in my style the way I would normally draw something for quite a long time, actually. So I thought <laughs> I would draw this, I don't even know what to call it, like washing up stick. <laughs> but it's funny, I was just standing there in the kitchen and I saw it on the windowsill and the way the light was kind of shining through it because it's see-through and it's got some blue washing up liquid in the handle. And I just thought it looked pretty cool and it has the bright yellow around the sponge and the green on the top. So, and then also the reddish brick color underneath. So I was like, oh, there's just so much going on here. And it's a very awesome shape as well, nice and curvy. And yeah, so I thought I would draw this washing up stick and show you, hopefully you agree, but show you how magical even sketching something so mundane can really be, which obviously is the entire point of this month. And to be honest with you, it's one of my favorite things to look at and also sketch is just to see normal everyday items be transformed into works of art. And I'm not saying this is a work of art or anything, but I think it's pretty cool. The finished product is pretty cool to look at, um, but you guys can let me know what you think in the in the comments. And you know, as I previously mentioned in the last video, artists like John Lovett and Electric Mirror on Instagram, I think Lena Sen, uh, they just do wonderful things with very dull items, basically. So yeah, I thought I would draw this because um, it really did actually capture my imagination. I also think it always helps if the thing itself does have a bit of color to it, because that can it can make it easier, I think, to interpret as something interesting. So, I mean, the, the wind chimes last week were quite monochromatic in a way, um, the final sketch, but obviously there was a lot of 
atmosphere added in terms of the drawing itself, uh, the scribbly lines and lost and found edges, which is a concept I'm still working on. It's not something I can do every time or completely know what I'm doing with. So I am sort of, you know, still feeling my way through that concept of lost and found edges, but I do think it's really interesting. And it actually is one of the main kind of concepts and techniques that can make something look really dynamic. So I'm going to do some more work on that myself. And then once I feel a bit more confident in showing you what I've learned, then I can share that with you guys. So as you saw, I just drew sort of the relatively basic shapes in pencil just to make sure it fits on the page, uh, which it just about does. <laughs> and um, now I'm going in with my fountain pen. I felt like using a fountain pen for this sketch. Uh, I don't always use a fountain pen, but every now and again I do. I've got quite a few of them. But as you may notice partway through this sketch, uh, the problem is the ink especially on this paper, it doesn't dry very quickly. I think that's what it is actually, because I've been going through a phase of really smudging my ink lines all the time when I'm using fountain pen. And now I'm thinking about it as I'm talking to you guys, it's always in this sketchbook. And this sketchbook has completely silky smooth paper, which I also don't usually use. So maybe the ink's just not soaking into the paper as quickly as I'm used to with maybe a more textured paper, like the Hahnemuller watercolor sketchbook that I used for a very long time. So hmm, revelation as I'm talking to you guys, I think that might be what it is. But you'll see now, obviously, resting my hand on this drawing and putting these marks in. If you look carefully, you can see I've, I've got bits of ink all over the place now, which is... I was quite annoyed, to be honest, <laughs> but I got over it because I was like, Do you know what, it's not going to, even if you still can see it after I put the watercolor on, you're not really going to notice unless you look hard. And also at the end of the day, it's a sketch in my sketchbook. So it's like not the end of the world at all. So right now, if you look, you can see kind of in the middle of the sketch where I was resting my hand. But never mind. Then uh, the step I didn't show you in between here was that I did go through and erase the pencil lines, but only very lightly and only where they were really obvious. And I do it with a kneadable eraser. That's personally my favorite. I know some sketches use the white plastic erasers, but I find, I don't know, I feel like they're a bit too harsh. So I quite like the kneadable eraser, but it doesn't erase the lines quite so well. It's just much more gentle. Maybe it doesn't matter for this kind of paper as much, but like definitely for the textured watercolor paper, I prefer using a kneadable eraser, one of those gray kneadable ones <laughs> that you can, and also you can shape them into like points and stuff. You can shape them into any anything you need. The problem is though, I've been keeping my eraser in my pencil case. And up until this point, I've been sharpening uh, with a normal sharpener and I did, you know, if I'm out and about, I've got nowhere to put the sharpening. So I put them in my pencil case and then the kneadable eraser just sucks them all up <laughs> and it's really hard to get it off. So then I'm kind of like pulling it apart and like trying to, what's the word, um, shape it back into itself basically. And every now and again, I'll pull it and like sort of shape it and I'll go to erase and there's a bit of lead or something from the the color pencil, the watercolor pencil in there. And it makes like a blue or a red mark across my page. I'm like, Ugh. <laughs> so I have actually invested in a sharpener that has its own little collection pot now. So I don't run into this problem, but yeah, trials and tribulations, hey, of, a, <laughs> of an urban sketcher. Anyway, I went on a bit of a tangent there, but I'm really enjoying putting these bright colors down on this stick and I'm definitely over egging the colors, but that's you know, for, to go for a sketch with loads of personality and quirkiness like this, I just really wanted to go bold with the colors. So I went for a nice kind of viridian green on the top there of the sponge. And I think like a cool lemon yellow to start with on the bottom of the sponge and then sort of went over the top with a warmer new gamboge type of yellow. And then also used a sort of light uh, cobalt light, cobalt teal cobalt turquoise light, I think, for the blue washing up liquid in the handle, which is quite nice. And I think if I'd put a background in, which I don't do in this sketch, I was kind of umming and ahhing whether to put a background in and I decided against it. But I think if I had, I could have tried to really push the see-through nature of the washing up stick uh, a bit more. Yeah, maybe I'll try that sometime just to see what happens. 
But you can see that kind of brown stripe in the handle was me just trying to show the window sill behind, which probably would make more sense if there was a background, but it's just, it's not going to bother me really. So now I'm going in uh, on the sponge there with a darker green just to really try and I've put like ink lines in there to indicate the spongy texture but um, I'm also just trying to emphasize that with putting a darker green in there as well. And at the bottom there I just wanted to put in some loose kind of English red to mix with Indian gold just to kind of indicate the surface that it's standing on. And I'm just going around with my Faber-Castell Pit Artist pens just to add a few shadow areas, like these little um, raised lines on the washing up stick, which are kind of like a grip or something. And obviously where items meet surfaces, it's always a bit darker there. And you might not necessarily even see it in the photo, but again, I'm a big fan of sort of exaggerating things, especially in very stylized sketches like this. So like the white piece bit of the sponge on the top there where the light's hitting it, I just kept it quite white, just over exaggerating for more effect. So at this stage, it's like, hmm, okay, it's just not looking quite as punchy as I want it to. So I'm just trying to think of ways to like punch it up a bit, make it a bit more contrasty, vibrant. So I'm using a blue watercolor pencil here just to really emphasize the darker section of the liquid where it's touching the side of the see-through stick. And then I thought I'd also get a watercolor pencil and just sort of add a bit more shading in the bottom of the sponge there. I'm really enjoying using watercolor pencils in conjunction with watercolor at the moment. Um, I've even bought myself a nice pencil wrap. I don't know if you saw my vi YouTube video on, um, on texture that came out on Sunday, but I showed at the beginning of that video my pencil wrap, which I've moved my pencils from the tins because they were banging around in there and falling out of the tin and I was just worried they were getting broken. I actually carry those around with me now uh, as well because all hopes of being a minimalist urban sketcher have gone right out the window at the moment. <laughs> I'm just enjoying playing too much. So I just like, I want everything with me at all times. And I'm just really enjoying augmenting watercolor with the watercolor pencils. A lot of the time I don't add water to the watercolor pencils. Sometimes I do. It just depends on what I feel like really, or what the picture kind of calls for. So I have added uh, a few hatching lines in areas, again, just to give it a bit more interest. It's not actually something I tend to do, but I want to do more of it because I always like the look of hatching. So you can see the perspective of this stick and the thing that it's sitting on. Uh, it's just, it's not quite right. And perhaps even the proportions aren't quite right. But you know what? It actually doesn't matter. If you look at this sketch, it still looks really fun. So I am just dotting in a bit of green in that white area on the sponge just to make it a little less harsh and indicate there is still a bit of texture going on there. So yeah, I guess my point is if your sketch is a bit twisty-turny, it's not quite the right shape or perspective, it doesn't really matter too much, you know? Just keep going with it and take what you can from it. And some things work, some things don't work. Here I'm putting like a mixture of Indian red and a purplish pigment that I can't remember the name of, just to indicate the shadow area underneath the dish there. And then I just really wanted to make it just look a little more fun and a little looser and a little more quirky. So I am adding a few splatters. I am trying to keep my hand over the, the sketch just to stop it from going quite over all over the place. But if you wanted to be a bit more careful with that, you could always place a paper over the top of your sketch just to make sure the splatters stay in the area where you want them to. They can be a bit unwieldy. <laughs> 
And if you can notice, I really tried to put some thick ink lines in certain areas, like underneath the dish and underneath the washing up stick and where the sponge meets the stick. The variation of line weight, again, really adds a lot of personality to the sketch. And again, I thought that shadow wasn't quite dark enough, so I've gone in with another layer, just making sure the first layer was dry. And you can see that looks much better now. And you see the little strip that I've left underneath the holder. It indicates that the holder is going up and then back down again to meet the surface. So just tiny little details like that can really make the world of difference. So I hope you've really enjoyed this demo, guys, and that you've picked up a few tips and that even the most boring of subjects can make really interesting sketches. And you see that I've drawn this really big across both pages of my sketchbook. So that's another thing you can do. You can play with scale. You could even really zoom in to just like the front portion of the sponge or something like that. The world is really your oyster when it comes to these sorts of things. So yeah, just take these items and play with them and have loads of fun. And if you've got any questions, please let me know in the comments below. I would be happy to help with anything that you need. And again, if you are doing some of these sketches or doing your own sketches, do make sure to tag me on Instagram. If you're on Instagram, hashtag TSA theme of month. I do actually have a Facebook page now. It's got like 10 people on it, which is like my mum, my dad and whatnot. I can't actually remember why I set it up, but if you want to share your photos over there, if you're on Facebook, then just search for Taria's Sketchy Adventures. It's a Facebook page. And I think you can probably share your pictures with me there too. So I'll put a link to that in the description below. But yeah, guys, I hope you've enjoyed this one. Do let me know your feedback and your questions, and I'll see you for week three's demo.